Glaio ono dot it ali vos dankas titsehinger. Don't worry, that was um, Danish for uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you too. Uh, saw a great video this morning, short and sweet from Camilla, but uh, great stuff. Um, and then another one from Marilyn, and uh, we definitely need to hear more about this great trip that you had, 16 hour trip up to Manitowoc to visit the family. Um, yeah, to the uh, fashion critics, um, I've given Eric Cozy some uh, advice about wearing the kilt. I've told him he really only needs to get a sparring. It's a bit big for me to send from America, for, send from Galashiels, I'm afraid. You'll need to try and find one uh, locally, and I'm sure there'll be plenty. Um, and then all you need, just need is some chunky boots and uh, just a t-shirt over the top would, uh, would mean you don't need to have a, a big wide belt. Um, and that would look uh, very casual and uh, he assures me that he does actually only support uh, two teams so one of the uh, one of the team shirts would be perfect for the job um, and then there's various stages of uh, wearing tartan and kilts and uh, the full uh, top end would be to go for what I call the full Jesse Ray look um, Jesse Ray if you um, check on the internet look at his images uh, it's spelled J-E-S-S-I-E -S -S -E, and Ray is R-A-E and uh, he's a, a local uh, pop star, rock star and a uh, great guy. He goes to all his functions in the complete tartan outfit, the whole, the whole setup including, and it's quite a fearsome sight, his helmet and a huge claymore, a massive, you know, the claymore is the big sword and, and his is like... A, a, nearly as tall as him, it's, it's, it's a fearsome sight. Anyway, that's the full Jesse Ray look, check it out. Um, Eric Cozy also mentioned people's various introductions to the case and their particular thoughts on the case and how he, for example, he felt so annoyed at Brendan's treatment. I, I get the impression that um, Eric Cozy had, um, has previously looked into uh, the wrongful convictions of other people. I know he's particularly keen on the uh, Scott Davis case and I'm just just starting to look at that one um, another one that, uh, that I've, um, I've read stuff about but I'm not fully up to speed with is the David Thorne case but uh, clearly it's it's not just Manitowoc that framing goes. we're not that naive but Manitowoc you've been exposed and you're trying to deny it ridiculous or <laughs> Herman the word you're looking for you're still looking for but it's ludicrous that describes your attitude towards uh, what's going to uh, transpire. Um, yeah, what what really annoyed me, I suppose, when I watched Making a Murderer was the fact that, you know, I I do know a lot of uh, both serving and retired policemen, and they're all very honourable men. And when I saw and heard. Not, not just Andy Coleman, obviously Jim Link, but particularly Andy Coleman. It annoyed me that such a pathetic, cowardly person um, gives other officers a bad name. Because, you know, even in Manitowoc, there are one or two genuine and honourable people. Like, for example, the police department back in 85, trying to tell Kasurik that uh, they'd got the wrong, the wrong guy. Um, so, when, when I first spoke with Herman, uh, as I say, he volunteered the information that he and Colburn get on fine and that he didn't bear a grudge, they didn't bear a grudge. Of course, I hadn't actually asked uh, Robert. It was him that volunteered that information. I, I as a result, I, I didn't realise that they had uh, ran against each other for sheriff. Um, so it was very odd, wasn't it, that he offered that piece of information that I hadn't even asked. So anyway, um, I've delved into a bit of the trial transcripts, particularly the, uh, the bit that relates to Colburn, who gave testimony on the seventh day of Stephen's trial, and that would be the 20th of February 2007. And uh, straight away, I... Uh, I found something that was, you know, uh, he shares the same propensity as Herman. On page 88, um, he answered a question by answering with an answer that hadn't even been asked. Um, Kratz simply asked him, where did you guys go? And Andy Colvin says, I had never been to Stephen Avery's trailer before, so I really didn't know where it was. 
Well, that wasn't what was asked. And I say, just answering a question with something that's not actually related to the question itself. Um, Obviously, while he was in the trailer, he took plenty of photos. Um, he found the novelty leg irons and the handcuffs. And of course, while he was in there, a key decided to jump out the back of the cabinet and walk all the way around to the side and then to head over for some shelter near the slippers. Uh, yes, we've got in Scotland, we've got haggis that, uh, that migrate around the hills and if you believe that, then you will believe that uh, keys can suddenly sprout little legs and, uh, as I say, migrate around a, a wooden cabinet. Um, another thing that, uh, that that made me laugh was that, uh, as I say, say, same idea as Herman. He was thinking of a word. And uh, so Kratz asks, could you describe the back panel of the cabinet? To which Andy replied with, it would be made out of a, I'm trying to think of the, the right word, like a piece of wood. Um, we, we get on to the fact that um, he received training um, from, amongst others, uh, Jim's Link. Um, and uh, he asks, uh, Dean asks um, Andy about his training as a uh, uh, te te uh, evidence technician. And uh, Dean actually simply asked him, uh, "Was he, he was involved in training you as an evidence technician?" To which Andy vaguely replied, "I am not exactly sure how to answer that without elaborating somewhat." To which Dean retaliates with, "Well, let's start with a yes or no." <laughs> um, the pair became. Obviously, friends, they looked after one another's back. That is, that is so painfully obvious to anybody watching this that uh, they they did um, look after one another. Um, because, interestingly, the, the, came, the time came in 2005-06 when um, Andy Colburn aspired to a higher rank than sergeant. Uh, he decided to run for sheriff against... Um, Andy uh, against Robert Herman and he, he Andy in his testimony denies that that created any tension but as Dean suggested you would have tried to see um, who would support you and who would support Robert I don't think there's any any doubt about that um, because he asked do you know if Link, Link was on your side um, and as I, as I say it's um, Link was his partner through several days of searching. Um, as the testimony has shown, they were paired together. Together they were deposed within 48 hours in Steve's lawsuit. And they stood together and had each other's back during a race for a high office that could have effect, been affected by further developments in that lawsuit. So um, clearly, it, it, to me, it's, it's quite obvious that Link um, and Colburn, uh, the... the one of them obviously dropped the key, um, the, and uh, obviously they, you know, they they were they were as thick as thieves. Basically, I think is the, is the word I'm looking for there. Um, because on page one six three, uh, he does actually admit that the thought did cross his mind that the lawsuit, or um, being involved in the lawsuit, would affect his. Uh, so he, he does admit that the thought had crossed his mind that he might be added to the lawsuit and that would have um, obviously created problems in um, trying to run for uh, for sheriff. Anyway, I'm going to stop it there for a moment and then I'll um, I'll do my next little bit because it's, um, it's a little bit long and it involves uh, reading bits of the trial transcript. So uh, just bear with me.